no one to a smoker, but now they do. Lip's gonna come in, EMP coming. The counter EMP is absolutely huge. Lip only finds Elsa. The counter comes in, catches five members, I do believe, on the side of Shanghai Dragons. We'll go ahead and translocate out. They nearly get the flip on the point. Hulk come out from flat out, finds Nisha. A great pickoff from him early. Monk's still gonna be alive into the pipes. The grab gets eaten by Ford. Now Elsa does small, huge plays. Coming up with window again, he does what happened. Yeah, the huge huge. Fire of the three. Forces out the beat there from Lee Jae-Gon. Monk gonna be the first one to fall. Oh, Off the point, and they just absolutely steamroll them. Oh my goodness. Now they look to move forward, but Iliaki dies off the start. The Bob's is crashing through. Bomb over the top, Elsa looking for a pick, and it seems like they should be able to stop them. But that being said, what a fight, two of the pulse bomb. Both support. Hello and welcome back to a little bit of Late Night Overwatch League. That's right, I am Doe. With me is ZP. As always, we are back. It's been a few weeks, hasn't it, ZP? I, I feel like I'm kind of getting back into it again. You know, I watched the May Melee, obviously, but it feels weird to go so long without casting, doesn't it? Yeah, it's been a little bit where, of course, we got sucked up watching the May Melee to its conclusion. Of course, the qualifiers get there, also super exciting. But now things have changed, Doa. We're into the June yeah. joust. The break from casting is over. And now we also get to see what the teams are doing. And right now, the teams are very split, whether it be NA or APAC, Doa. We're seeing a lot of different takes on how to handle this set of hero pools. Yep, that's right. Uh, there's going to be a lot of new hero stuff going around with all the heroes being banned, of course, with the hero pulls. But don't forget, of course, this week, submit your favorite Overwatch League player enjoying a cold Coca-Cola at overwatchleague.com slash art gallery. ZP, if you could draw one of our uh, Overwatch League players drinking a Coke, who would it be? I mean, it would have be to be uh, Mortalizing Sato, where we've already looked at Sato just <laughs> chugging, chugging sure. with all his might. I mean, how could you not want to draw that and just do your own take on the old Sato uh, chug? That, that's my pick. That's true. No doubt. The old Sato chug. That's a, that's <laughs> what they called it back in the day. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Who could forget? But it is going to be interesting. Like you said, June Joust, we have the hero pools coming in. It's, of course, Tracer, Sombra, Reinhardt, and sadly... Single tear down my cheek. Zenyatta, who is not going yep. to be seen in this next stage of the Overwatch League tournament. And and uh, that's going to change things a lot. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And uh, speaking of that, let's take a look at uh, some of our damage players because they're going to have to make some adjustments, especially players that relied on Tracer. Yaki, of course, comes to mind number four on our list right now. But in terms of players who are going to need to adjust things a little bit here, who jumps to mind for you, ZP? You know, on the adjustment list, uh, as you mentioned, it's anyone that is not playing Tracer in this meta, or particularly in the Dallas. Like, we're not watching Dallas tonight, but Doha. There's no sure. Sombra. And Doha, I mean, that has been a signature hero for ages that really showed yeah. for him, you know, in the main melee. So I think Doha's going to have the most work to do. But you know who isn't going to have a whole lot of work to do here, Doha? It's Lip, where Lip, of yep. course, looked incredible on the single shot hit scan, particularly on McCree. And Lip just sits here going, hmm. I'm on the top of this list, and I still get to play exactly what I want to play. So Lip's the real winner here. Yeah, Lip stock definitely rising yeah. here. And I think you could make that argument for Fleta as well, because we know he has a yeah. mean Farah. He's got a couple other heroes as well. The Genji sometimes that uh, he can bring out a little bit more often, perhaps the Echo as well. But let's take a look at our first team in this series between the Shanghai Dragons and the Chengdu Hunters. It, of course, is going to be our May Melee runners up. They performed well. They nearly did it. They couldn't quite take down Dallas, but now they're back with a Vengeance CP to try to take down APAC here in June. Yeah, and uh, seeing the Dragons back in action, it's going to be uh, really cool to see what sort of takes they have on the meta. And yeah, it's never great to be the first team up against uh, you know a team that's out there looking for revenge. It's like, oh, what's going to happen? But of course, the Hunters, yeah. Doha, not a team to be underestimated in the least. Uh, a team that's also just hard to predict, both historically and very likely this season, especially as you get into a brand new hero pool. Yeah, I mean, and the, here's the thing is that the Hunters have always been fine playing kind of an unorthodox style, but I wonder, you know, is it going to be uh, Among's Playground possibly uh, coming into this one? Because we're not going to see him start, but we do know from the May Melee that the Hunters aren't afraid to bring him in when necessary. But for now, it's going to be the uh, the more or less the roster that we've kind of gotten used to with uh, Gaga and Elsa being the tank lineup here. 
Yeah, and I mean, not too surprised. I mean, really, the surprise was Amon coming in during the main melee because he thought, okay, Gaga's yeah. good and everything. You'll just value Gaga's versatility. But hey, Amon came in and also played really well in some of the great. series there. So I, I yeah. think it's one of those things where people might have ran off Amon a little bit too early going, ah, why do you need him when you have Gaga? It's like, well, the Hunters were able to use him pretty well. So uh, don't be surprised if he gets swapped in. Yep, that's right. Uh, you know, speaking of players, I think that will adapt pretty well to the meta. The player frozen in the crying emoji right now. It's Leave, of course. He was uh, doing a great job, I thought, on uh, heroes like the Ash a little bit earlier in May. So we'll see if he can bring that out again now in uh, June. But I I'm curious because the thing is, is the hero pool ZP really do shake things up a lot, especially when you have a huge tank like Reinhardt gone, a huge DPS like Tracer out of the way. Um, and even a champion like Zenyatta, who when you think about, you know, going back to uh, talking about Among a little bit earlier in the ball, Zenyatta pretty crucial on the other side to counter him in that sometimes you need that orb of discord to just get the damage in because he's so hard to pin down, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think that's why you will be seeing more ball uh, be played. Probably. Just because, as you mentioned, uh, Discord were pretty good at pinning it down. But, you know, on the leave note, before we get too far removed, what I want to see from Cleave, because when it came out, it was actually fearsome, bring the Hanzo back. Like, if we're in an era oh, right yeah. now where teams are still yeah. messing around with what heroes you want to play, and some teams have been running the Hanzo so far here in the June Jest, Leave, please play Hanzo. I mean, treat us, because I thought Leave's Hanzo, I mean, it's always been pretty good, but it was really quite good during the main melee. I'd love to see it return in force here in the June Joust. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I think what we've gathered from the matches we've seen today, both in NA and now in APAC, is that teams are still really kind of figuring things out. You know, we've got uh, we've got a you know, double shield that's out there, right? But there's uh, some dive, of course, that's still very possible with the uh, the heroes that are available. But this is still very much a meta in development, you know? And so yeah, I think I, we're going to learn more about that ZP as we get into our first map. It's going to be Oasis. Yeah, I mean, I think for a lot of the player or team so far, it's been we've done a lot of searching. We've done a lot of thinking. And so far, we've concluded we don't know anything just yet. Uh, things have yeah. yet to settle. But surely they will over the coming weeks as we head into, you know, the deeper parts of the June Joust. But for now, I'm just excited to see what takes the teams have. And if there's any team that's very willing to go off the beaten path, well, it's the Chengdu Hunters. So uh, we'll see what they bring yeah. to the table here against the Dragons. We're starting out on Oasis, like we mentioned already, as we get into our first map of this first to three between the Shanghai Dragons and the Chengdu Hunters. And uh, yeah, they did say uh, that's a good point. It was a 3-0 for Chengdu when these teams met last stage, which is kind of shocking considering how things uh, how things ended up. I think Hunters surprised a lot of people in the main melee, maybe exceeding expectations a little bit, going with that 3-1 in the end. But uh, Shanghai, obviously the team to make it all the way to the finals of the eventual tournament. Let's see if they can get up to a strong start here. Well, one thing both teams favoring right now, Soldier 76, the legs, yeah. saw it in NA earlier today from teams like the Florida Mayhem. So see just how Lip does. No longer the Cowboy, now on the 76. Both that goes getting a little bit frisky. The kick things off is Gaga under heavy pressure. Gets hit with Cloud and Flutter doesn't let him go. I think it makes a lot of sense. Flood has been a great uh, echo so far in the tournament. And I love that we are seeing the Soldier 76s because not only is that a great answer to the echo, but he's just going to be sort of a good replacement of that constant damage pressure that Tracer can put on. Maybe not from the flanks that Tracer can do, but just in general, you know? And of course, without a Reinhardt, without that huge shield, Soldier's going to be a great hero in terms of uh, DPSing down the smaller shields of like an Orisa or a Sigma, so you can kind of crack the eggshell of the enemy team, so to speak. Exciting well, to see. cracking. Leave was able to take down Flood up pretty early into that, but the problem is that the Dragons have control of the point. They're able to bounce around, but oh. they're getting just <laughs> sort of torn down here. It's Leave, really consistent damage on the outskirts. Lip's going to get res back up, but the Hunters, they're in a really, really good spot now here, Doa. And now, here comes Nano oh, with Leave. Leave is a monster, just elimination after elimination. Sprinted left, sprinted right, do whatever he wants right now. Yeah, it's been the soldier show so far, both Leave and Lip really are putting up the numbers, but Leave, of course, that player who's already playing quite a bit of soldier, even back in May, now pops his attack. Pfizer doesn't get anything with it, though. His fate takes him down. We had to say good things about Leave, so inevitably he would immediately start dying. Now fate with the primal raid trying to get things done. Fleta even swapping over to his own ball on that Echo. Stealing it for just a moment, but will it be enough to take the point back? I'm well, not so, so sure, ZP. 
Yeah. Right, right now, the upset for the Hunters, even as they're getting, you know, uh, taken down by a few limbs here and there, they were able to get control of the point back. So yeah. now it's the dragon stuck going, okay, how do we fully evict you from the point? Bait right now under a little bit of heavy pressure. The Hunters back up to a full six. And, and this is where, especially we're in the ball, they can really delay things. We're okay, you're down Nisha early. Evicting all the members of the Hunters away from the point here at City Center. It's going to be hard here, Doa. But now that's step yeah. one. Fate with the Nano. Look into the oh. corner. Month goes down. Yeah, I, now, now you take it back, right? Because you lose Lip, sure, but the res is going to come in anyway, and they should be able to force everybody else back. Elsa, obviously, is going to be kind of annoying on that D.Va, but with the d coming in, they should be able to finally flip this, and they do. There you go. 70%. 70% for the Chengdu Hunters. Not bad. Yeah, no, it was a really good flip, and you know, what kicked all that off is Leave just being super consistent on the Soldier. One pick off after another until the Dragons just could not stand the point. That's how the Hunters yeah. got on the board. And now we look at Leave here again, because I think he is the story here for the Hunters as they look to repeat what they did before. Yep. Now Leave doing a good job of staying in a fairly safe spot. Gaga coming in to try to give him a little bit more room to free fire here. As Hunters try to take back the point, gotta dodge that self-destruct, but in the pillar, they're gonna find a, a grouped up Shanghai Dragons team. We'll see if they can take advantage of it. Trying to do it now, and here comes Attack Visor from Lip. See if he can turn around for his side. Now, well, someone that has everything in his sights doesn't have too much in his sights, but uh -oh. Leave, on the other hand, his uh -oh. fire's up. Finds Lee Jake on, gets slumped uh -oh. towards the end. Still <laughs> the Hunter's tired. working at 6v5, then. Are they able to get the flip here? Not quite yet. Dragon still controls 79%, but the Hunters are slowly pushing their favor. With that, surely that should be enough. You would imagine, right? I mean, one of those is the D-Bank, of course. Elsa does get res, though, so they do have that D.Va back again. Jinmu, yep, focusing down Fate. And so you think it's going to be a retake. But that said, 93% for the Shanghai Dragons. If they can win one more fight, they can easily still flip this and take the point. It's still anyone's game. But for the moment, Leave is with the lead. <gasps> Leave. He got He's caught. Izzyaki goes down, he could get res. That's big. Yep. Yeah, I think we're, 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 we're pushing more niches here. Gaga's down, and... Not sure the Rose is going to come in. It's the fact that Dragon's getting back to full strength, heading on over. Fate just diving through, takes down Nisha. And the Dragons immediately just stagger the Hunters, hop back in. This should be a retake. And we'll see if the Hunters can do anything to keep this in contest. Yeah, that that is amazing. Uh, just kind of steamrolling their way back in, and now they can just move ahead. Try to zone things out a little bit. Overtime is popped. Do the Hunters have any chance to take this back, though? They got the sleep on the Gaga. Can they finish him and off? The Ooh, they do He's quite, down. but he gives. All right, he keeps the uh, overtime going again. I don't know, ZP. I don't think the Hunters can get back in. Monk dead. Yep. Looking good for the Dragon oh. so far, but they do lose Fate. Yeah, Fate's on. Leave is on the outskirts right now, but it's going to be working uphill and then some. The Dragons have an overwhelming numerical advantage. Jinmu is down, and yeah, Leave. You had everything nope. in your sights up to the point that you saw death just approaching. So that's going to be yep. the Dragons taking round one. Yep, a uh, nice little adaptation right at the end by Fleta to uh, copy Jinmu on the other side, who had swapped to that Reaper. Ended up being the nice uh, little defensive choice at the end to get Shanghai that point. But uh, what can you say, to say ZP? It was, it was a brawl. It was a yeah. knockdown, drag out, barroom fight. I'm surprised we didn't have bottles flying all over the place, too. But uh, it was messy. We'll see what happens here. On the second point, it's a library, so you got to be kind of quiet. Yeah, that's At least true. I think that's so, what my neighbors yeah. would prefer. <laughs> well, that's right. You're sitting here wondering in your, your new place going, you know, just how yeah, loud man. can I be? And, and you're just going to have that uh, air of, oh, boy, I wonder how last <laughs> night went. Uh, is someone going to knock on my door I and just, say, you're a little I bit know, loud, neighbor. <laughs> a little please show up. I, I just moved into a new apartment, and this is my first cast in the new apartment, so we'll see. We'll see if the walls are thick enough. I put up some sound deadening foam, oh. so so fingers crossed. It does yeah, make you feel uh, like whisper casting, though. Like, oh my gosh, there goes the Torbjorn turret. He got it. <laughs> well, that, that's about it. all the excitement anyone ever has for a Torb turret duck. So honestly, I yeah. think it's completely okay. That's no one cares about how my casting voice is going to sound when I'm 70, by the way. Yeah. Well, there you go. What a play. Market for that. Uh, you thought it would be Decker King. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Le Le There's a <laughs> Well, you got Leave on the McCree here, Doa. Swap on both sides. Jimmu still on the Torb, and uh, Shanghai, they're just diving on in in response to your line. Immortality Field already out. Elsa Monk still oh. completely okay. Right. Fate, that's super quick nano built up by Izzyaki as Fate moves in, looks to evict. Disha and Elsa getting a caught as a result. And I gotta say, that nano, super quick. 
Yeah, it was good nano. Uh, Lip made a good Fight use of it as well. What? To swap it. The comeback. You know, the funny thing is it was a really nice disengage, actually, by the Hunters. They might give the point over here. It looks like they do, but they managed to hold on and get uh, nearly 30%, so not a bad first take and hold for the Hunters, despite initially losing that fight pretty quick. It was not bad. Yeah, not, not at all. I mean, they will be coming in. Multicore should be up soon. Dragon's though, in a really, really nice state. So I don't think the Hunters are going to wait too long here. I think they're just going to go straight no. in. They're not going to wait for anything to be built. I think Supercharger is going to go down immediately. They, they, under pressure, was able to get away. And now here comes yeah, Lip. Attack Visor up, gone. flooded to the back. Lip's already got one, and this could be over before it begins. Could be, yeah. I mean, just firing down the hallway. No one really able to take that. He takes out all the tertiary stuff. Fleta, meanwhile, has the ult available. Does he even need to use it? Doesn't seem like it. And the Hunters are going to have to fall back to regroup. A couple parting kills on the way. Yep, going to grab the supports on the way out. They need to be a bit swap careful, the here. Yeah, I think they're going to be happy with that. Yeah, Jin moves yeah. over on the Reaper now. <laughs> you got to give up the Torb. I think the Torb is something where like, it kind of makes sense if you can win the first fight and the turret's up yeah. and it's annoying. But this late when you're looking to retake, the Reaper's definitely the play. Totally. Like, I mean, we it, it did work well. They did get that early little boost of percentage, up to 29%. But like you said, hard to use it on the retake here. They're going to go into the side hallway here. Oh, all right. Gravitic Flux for Elsa. Can they get the tanks out of that? Oh, they pop the Primal Rage on the Fate side, ZP. It's a nice Primal from Fate. Fate getting good disruption. Still staying alive. Fleta working for the back. Double get up. Can't go down. Oh, Ooh. gets caught. Leap flashbang. Fan takes down Fleta. There's not going to be a duplicate here. Lip, though, meanwhile, drops attack visor on the side. The Fleta res comes in. Was able to get out without getting punished. Now Fleta still has a duplicate up and ready. Gonna drop. It goes for sick, but Ooh. now moving on in. It's gonna be an uphill battle here, though, Doaz. Dragon's still down in numbers. We'll see if the Hunters yeah. can finish it off. Duplicate just about Indeed. faded, but here comes the Flux. Is it gonna get anything? It does. Void yep, Lip lead. falling through on the other side. Wow. Fleta, you know, doing a bit of a deadlift there. I don't know about the numbers, but in terms of just the eye test, Presence. he really helped carry that fight. EJ Gon manages to go in and get the res at the very end. Lit, meanwhile, finds a rocket on Nagaga. And it's really been uh, the, the lip show here this round as well. Oh, Jinmu says he's not quite done yet. Gets two, but I don't know if it's going to be enough for the Hunters to come back and retake. This doesn't look like it with Void grabbing a double kill of his own, and that is going to be Shanghai managing to win the round and uh, take the map with it. Yeah, between the two teams, I mean, the Dragons are definitely playing something that looks more standard, feels more standard. I mean, look, they're not coming out with the Torb in response. Yeah. And I mean, I do like how coordinated the Dragons look, especially given the offerings that we've seen from NA or the previous series. So far, the Dragons actually feel like the team right now that has the most control of whatever the meta might be. But also, it's map one. I'm not going to, like declare them the kings here just yet, but I think it was a very good showing for the Dragons where they, they looked more in command, like I said, than uh, a lot of the other teams have looked so far here in the June Joust. Yeah, I, I think when you see a uh, series like this where one of the teams is a little bit more uh, erratic, a little bit more wild like the Hunters are, and they still can't win control, which is usually the map type that those types of teams excel at, it's a little bit of a, it's a little bit of a uncomfortable sign for fans of that team. But like you said, it's just the beginning of the match. We'll see if Shanghai is able to take this first map win and extend that into a series victory later on. But don't go anywhere. Map two coming up on the Overwatch League right after this. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. Set your sights on the competition with T-Mobile. And by Indeed, we help people get jobs.
The Awards League is brought to you by Coca-Cola, the official refreshment of the Awards League. And by IBM, the official cloud and AI partner of the Overwatch League. Welcome back to the Overwatch League, everybody. Doan ZP here with you. Shanghai Dragons able to take Oasis, get that early lead. And why wouldn't they, ZP? They are the runners up for May Melee, just barely losing out to the Dallas Fuel in the finals in that tournament last month. But, you know, it's it's going to be interesting to see what happens because if if Hunters were going to win any map. I thought it was going to be Control. I'm a little bit worried for them now, ZP. Uh, what, what's your take on the situation of things after map number one? Well, my general take after seeing is that the Hunters right now, they're more in line with all the other teams in the June Jest, where they're still figuring things out, willing to try things sure. off meta and otherwise. Right? I mean, technically, you could argue everything's off meta, but the Dragons, this is the first what team I think we've seen right in the June Joust that actually yeah. looks all on the same page, very coordinated engagements, especially in university where you just looked at it, it was like, oh, this is how a team should be diving in right now in Overwatch, and this mm -hmm. makes sense. So the, right now, I, yeah, I look at the two teams and the Dragons seem pretty far ahead, but that's also map one, it's control. And as much as we want to say, hey, the Chaos of Control works more in Chengdu's way, I mean, let's see what actually happens as we head into Hollywood, which is uh, gonna be our next map. That's right. Hollywood is back in the map pool yet again. It's going to be our hybrid map, like a ZP just said. Uh, it was pretty cool to uh, see Lip on that Soldier 76 in that last map. I felt like everybody else was playing like a regular Overwatch, and he was playing Ultimate Gun Game. <laughs> he just had TAC Visor up pretty much the entire time. But between uh, his accuracy, the nano boost he was getting, why wouldn't he? Over on the Ash this time as they uh, get ready to roll out on the defense. Chengdu Hunters on the offense. And ZP, this is what I thought we were going to start seeing here. Is we're going to see more of the projectile DPS coming out from the Hunters. Leave on the far right now. Jinmu on the Genji. Now, we know Jinmu can play Fara as well. So there's some switching that can be done. But this is the kind of comp I felt like we were going to see from Hunters. Yeah, I mean, this is something that's definitely more in their wheelhouse yeah. than other teams defense. where... Yeah, I mean, I think Doom Genji, this can work. I mean, Genji yeah. is sort of one of those things where you look at it any meta right now, like, ooh, is it going to work? And, you know, if anyone yeah. can make it work, it's going to be Jinmu. So, you know, we'll see how this pans out. The Dragon's are running something that definitely on paper feels a little bit more stable. Yeah. Now, Leave makes another swap over onto the Reaper this time after maybe a seeing who was peeking around the corner at the beginning. I don't mind that at all. Again, uh, Reaper, just another one of those characters that can burn through like Winston shields very, very quickly. Take advantage of that big old target. They're going to dive on the lip, though. Can they take right down now, the lip? No. Hunter's going very aggressively into the cafe. Gaga gets left in the middle of it. Leave at half. Jimbu heading on over, looking for lip. Lip has no HP, still somehow alive, shakes the pressure. And Fleta was able to get to the back, deals with the Ana. And the Dragons, despite being so low, very close to finding this back. Now down to Ziaki. Fleta, though, wow. just swoops off back in. Fleta That's was be just it. untouched. Fleta was just untouched in that fight. Like, he was able to just fire into the cafe from behind after the dive from the Hunters came in. And that's going to be a big concern. Like, I mean, if you're the Hunters right now, you dedicated everything to killing Lip. Everything for that dive didn't really get anything out of it. Definitely a bit disheartening on that first push. Yeah, I mean, Lip, again, just a total escape artist. Now the problem is both Fleta and yeah. Lip should have ults going into this. I mean, Jimmu has Blade. They're going to have to wait for Monk to build for Nano here and all like Gaga. Already at half. Bob coming out early. Okay, Jimbo's not going to wait for any oh, nano. Says, I got go. this. Slices <laughs> twice. Takes down two. No nano required. As Jimbo opens the way for the Hunters. They still need a little bit uh -oh. more. The fight's not over yet. Boyd with the self destruct. Oh. Takes down Jimbo. <laughs> and as I was saying, it's not quite over yet. Even with Lip out yeah. of the fight, the Dragons come back in strong. Oh, as they say, Ninja vanished, but uh, I don't think Jinmu vanished the way that he wanted to there. EJ Gon does go down, but meanwhile, Shanghai still holding strong at the point. They actually managed to force Hunters out for the moment. Fleta with that swap over under the D.Va, and he's got the self-destruct to keep that point safe, give his team some time to respond. He didn't use it on the point, though. I'm a little bit surprised about that. But either way, Shanghai back in action on the defense. What a hold. Yeah. Yeah, they're just about up to a full six. The window of opportunity fading. The Hunter's so close, yet a little bit far away, even with the Great Blade from Jimbu to kick things off. Jimbu, though, right. says, okay, maybe I don't need a blade. Takes down Lee Jae gone early. Both teams <laughs> yes. down a support. Five on five. Flood in the cafe. Flutter. Blows up Jimbu. Catches him towards the end. And the Dragons I... well on their way to a full reset here in the defense. 
I mean, that was a nano boosted Fleta as well. I mean, and this is one of the scary things about the Dragons right now is between Lip and Fleta, Izzyaki is pretty much always going to find a damage dealer that's on a flank that's going to be able to come in from an unexpected angle, and they've put that to such good use here on the point A defense. Gaga just decides to go check He's out just the back there. Map. He's like, all right, I'm just going to go try to... Is there a movie I can audition for? Uh, he's looking around. He's, he's like, the back oh, I can roll anywhere. Uh, Drivens are back in style, right? Well, he's, he's Gaga out there is going to roll in from the back. Already half HP, but here comes Jimbu. This time with the Nano, immediately cuts Flood out of the sky. Yeah, looking for Mercy. Before, though. Swinging a miss. One, Meanwhile, Lip. Lip. Yeah, Attack Visor's up from Lip right now. Okay, well, he saw the All Reaper right. directly right. in his face, and surely this should be it for Chengdu. You'd have to think so. I mean, uh, enough shenanigans, says uh, the Hunters, and they just use everything they have to finally take this point to get the payload rolling. But uh, that was alarming, man. I mean, look at the counter right now. They're going to take it with only a little over 20 seconds remaining that gets added to this uh, this time pool here. So not the most time in the world. And while we don't see a ton of point B holds, really, in, uh, in hybrid in general, this could be one of them. They don't have a lot of time for point B. And even if they do get through point B, I mean, the, the time deficit just follows you for the rest of the map, right? Uh, yeah. You don't want to go into point C with hardly any time left for Vanguard. <laughs> okay, well, leave goes well. Oh, no. Leave gets blown up by Void. But the rest oh, is there. Oh, no. Yeah, you don't Dragons, want that. they're not really giving up much room for free here, though, as Fleta just sits there at the top, duplicate, ready to go. Leave uh, struggling to find shots here. As Dragons aren't making it easy. Leave goes down again. Not a fun time to be a yeah. widow right now. Ah, oh, Fleta gets two as well. And this is always a scary thing about point B if you're the attackers, is that there's so many high ground angles that the defense can come down on you from, and they get that one pick, and suddenly the tanks are diving over the top of your team into the back line, taking out the supports, and then you can even hold right here. Yeah, this little choke as the gates open is actually a place where the defense can uh, shore up for a while. So it's sometimes tough to even really get the payload moving here on point B Hollywood. Well, one thing of note here, Leave fell into the classic Widow swap trap where uh, just getting dove on multiple fights in a row goes, all right, dump the Widow, now onto McCree. A little bit yep. more consistent. The problem is the Dragons still have ults to work with here early on. Flood is still hanging on to Duplicate. Jimbu, though, close to the yeah, blade, right. Nano in reserve. So, again, it's going to be another Nano Blade to play coming up here. Jinmu, Blade at the ready. The question is, where does he start? And he's going to start it now, Dylan. Go. Goes for the Out Blade. Gets stunned early, still takes down Lip, no fear. Oh, that was close, man. If he didn't have the Reflect, he would be pretty dead. Either way, has to back away, but they've got two kills anyway, so they're going to be okay with this. Elsa on the Roadhog managed to get one, and we haven't really talked about that much yet, where a Roadhog is probably going to be a hero that now that Reinhardt's out of the game, uh, for the moment anyway, yeah. we're probably going to see quite a bit more of. A little bit less yeah, I mean, blocking he... those hooks than before. <laughs> Yeah, he was used uh, quite a bit at NA earlier today. I mean, again, yeah. you know, both regions still figuring out. But yeah, I, I fully agree. I think Hog in general, something that we'll be seeing more gameplay here. A lot of pros seemingly think so, and so far it's been the case in practice. Dragon yep. so back on the way in Doha. Valkyrie out here early from Lee Jae gone. Fate out of the fight to kick things off. Fate for Fleta now with the clone yep. Genji. And That's a, a quick blade build, and here Woo. we go. One blade may deserve another as Fleta 2. Three dashes on in. That is not something you see every day out of an echo. No, it is not. He got that blade in like .0001 AKM blades. It was so fast. <laughs> that might I mean, be point. Uh, that might be the end. That might be the end of it right there. Unless uh, maybe the hunters can push a little bit farther. We need a new metric. AKM blade, of course. <laughs> you go to a slower blade. Flood a blade. Just on the other That's end right. of the spectrum. Exactly. Much quicker. Let it echo blade. And there's a point B hold. It's like we were saying going into that one. There wasn't a whole lot of time for the Hunters to push. And uh, like you said, that time deficit follows you. And where it took so long to finally get the payload moving, they paid for it, not quite getting it to the end of B. So that said, the Dragons seem to have a fairly easy path ahead of them. Not a lot of teams would get stopped at the point that the Hunters do, especially not a team like the Dragons that have looked so good so far in the Overwatch League this season. I mean, the easiest path, and you know, e easy being a relative term here, for the sure. Hunters to bring this back and you know make the Series 1-1 would be We're just having a really, here. really good hold on point A. But uh, yeah. it's going to be tough. <laughs> uh, Goodbye, Leave. Yep. Barely on the edge there. They have the res, but it still hurts. You know? You, yes. you remember that one. <laughs>
Yeah, and also, ooh, he's going to go for the Widow here on point A, where, I mean, it can have a high reward, but also pretty high risk as well, especially when you know, losing even just one player early yeah. as a defense could be a problem. It, the, the Hunters are putting wow. a lot of faith into leave on this early Widow, where it, he didn't quite get momentum started on the offense, but on a defense, it could be a different case. I mean, I guess the idea with Widow on point A, too, is that, you know, you're expecting to see something like the Farah or the Echo on the other side. They kind of have to pop over that side building above security, and then it's going to be easy to pin them down. And that we will see the Echo, but we will also see an opposing Widowmaker from Lip as well. Oh, going to swap now. Okay, just looking for that early shot. Over the Wait, on the swapping? Uh, I thought it was going to really? see a rare double swap. Not quite. Yeah, he paused for a second. He was thinking about it. A little bit of indecision here from Lip as they're coming into it. Fade down early, so Shanghai's going to have a little bit more time to think about their hero choices. Yeah, I don't think they're on the same page. I think Lip was still heading out of spawn as uh, Fate went yeah. in, but okay. Jimu gets caught. Flutter pays for it. Jimu gets rezzed. Uh, pretty good exchange yep. all in all for the Hunters there. Even now, I Flutter believe it was a, a Roadhog hook onto Fate that started that whole chain of events. That got them that early kill on the Monkey, but... Uh, you know, maybe they weren't expecting Elsa to play that on defense. Either way, those hooks are definitely something you're going to need to worry about. Ooh, yeah. Yep. Lip. <laughs> Narrowly avoiding it Bowler. there. Yeah, knew it was coming, but that's still a scary moment. Well, this time the Dragon's back up to six. Flood uh, diving in the back with the focusing beam. Monk in danger. And Izayaki again, a super quick nano build. Yep. Leave out of the fight. Jimbu, though, yep. going back the other end off the duplicate, chasing down the Hanzo, going to find him, but the Dragons are doing a lot of work into the back line right now, Doa. Yeah, I mean, Jinmu had to use his ult uh, just to stay alive, copied the uh, copied the Winston, but then wasn't able to get a lot done with it. Meanwhile, the rest of his team just falling to the Dragons as they take the point, and as Elsa drops, that is going to be an extremely quick point well, A take for the Dragons here. The Hunters still might head back out. I mean, this is going to be really uh, you could this still is gonna be tough it, to make work. They're still, they still technically have an outside chance here, but this is, again, yeah. high risk, high reward. And, you know, the risk here is just supercharging Shanghai for a point B where they'll have a lot of time. But the Hunters, they feel the risk is worth it. Oh, They're going to head bold. for it. <laughs> Trading All evenly right, well, so far. If Fled does go down, leave, uh, pop that dead eye at uh, just the right time, it seemed like. And maybe, maybe, yeah, with the whole hog from Elsa, they actually do have a chance Fate to possibly take this back. That said, Fate with the Primal too Rage. Much. It is. It is. Yeah. Fate with the Primal was still able to keep control. And, you know, I think the Hunters, they still have to go for it, just given how they don't have much room to defend with here on point B. But four yeah. minutes and 15 seconds left to go. A lot of time for the Dragons. And this is going to devolve into one fight territory very quickly. It was looking good until the Monkey got mad and Fate <laughs> able to deliver that point A. And now they've got about twice as much time as the Hunters did to get it to nearly the end of point B here. And you can see, too, they're being very proactive about taking the high ground. They had the luxury of being able to put some people a little bit farther forward and not give the Hunters a time to, uh, to set up. So you need to do on point B here if you're on the attack. Take that high ground fast. And, I mean, Jimmy right now trying to defend the duplicate is ready to go. Leave, meanwhile, oh, Deadeye off of the side leave. once again. Again, gets flood up, but Ooh, leave gets got at the same time as Fate just gets to walk forward here. 65% to another primal, moving forward. The Dragons with momentum. The Resurrection are going to come back in on both sides. Flood and leave both getting new lease on life. Lip, though, on the top, on the Hanzo. Under pressure, 50 HP, barely able to shake some of it here, Doha. But the payload moves forward all the while as the Dragons yeah. don't have much further to go. Yeah, meanwhile, they did get the DMEC uh, on to Elsa here. That helps a lot. Fate jumping down to get the McCree. Well, we'll find out soon who he did, and that is going to be the Shanghai Dragons. Absolutely raffle stomping the Chengdu Hunters. That payload's going to move fast at this point, and the Dragons nearly ready to put it up 2-0 in this series. Hunters last ditch effort. They only have the Batiste wall, though, to defend this with. No other alts really all that close. <laughs> And they also have to get out of spot as near as Jujitsu. Yeah. His wings clipped before he can fly. Flood uh, off the That's duplicate. It, and the dragons That's just it. do not <laughs> let the hunters even get out. Meanwhile, payload very close to its final destination. The dragons, they have come to play here, Doa, in the June joust. Gonna be up two to nothing versus the hunters. And uh, right now, it's not looking close. Yeah, I mean, uh, Fate even some time to emote on top of the payload at the end of that one. That was about as fast as it could possibly be. 
honestly. And and I love the way that Shanghai played point B. They really had everything the way they wanted, right? Where they were able to win those fights in a way that they could quick send everyone forward, take the high ground, and make sure that the defense didn't really even have a chance, honestly. I mean, you look back at that map, Hunter's ZP, was there anything they could have done? Uh, it's tough. I mean, the Dragons were playing incredibly composed. And uh, again, I just yeah. feel like between the two teams, the Dragons, the they're playing so much better around their dive and just setting up team fights more cohesively than the Hunters are, where the Hunters are still just a little bit all over the place. I mean, again, I think the Hunters versus any other team we've seen so far in the June Joust would be looking totally fine. The Dragons, though, on the other hand, it seems like they've already written the playbook on what other teams may be copying as we go forward into this month of play. That's right. Well, the Dragons, one map went away from taking the series in short order. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll see if they can do just that. Don't go anywhere. The Overwatch League returns right after this. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. Set your sights on the competition with T-Mobile. Back to the Overwatch League. Uh, the Shanghai Dragons taking this series too fast, too furious, uh, possibly as we are just one map win for them away from taking the series in the 3-0 ZP. I think, I think a lot of people expected Shanghai to win this one. Obviously, Chengdu ended up getting the 3-0 of their own in the May melee, but Shanghai just looking so good after that match. It was as if that loss sort of awakened the Dragon, as it were, and it has not gone to sleep yet. They are looking pretty good today, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, I think this is one of those cases where the Hunters looked at the schedule like, uh, do we really have to play them at the beginning? Do we, do we, have, to, <laughs> yeah. do we have to be the ones that receive the anger that's going forward? Because, look, we knew coming into the season the Dragons would be scary. They kind of had a slow start right. in the May melee, but got better and better as the tournament went on. And, you know, the June Joust starts out, and 
right now they're looking the most composed of any of the teams we've witnessed here so far. And they're doing yeah. the style, Doa, where you look at heroes like Echo, where, you know, generally speaking, when players go for duplicate on the Echo, they go, okay, well, we'll do what's reliable, right? We'll, we'll, we'll duplicate the tank because it's high value, usually pretty good. No, Flutter goes, oh, you dare play a Genji against me. Let me show you how a blade is. and just builds up the blade pretty much instantly. Great stuff. Yeah, he, he seriously did have that instantly. I think it was just like a couple right clicks where he hit every Shuriken and he just like had it immediately. So, I mean, if you're the Hunters right now, you're definitely feeling like, all right, well, clearly this team is out playing us like crazy. What are we going to do for our final map? Uh, we're waiting for the players to kind of get in the lobby. There's a couple spots that haven't been filled yet. So I wonder, ZP, if we're going to see some uh, roster swaps going on here. You know, because the Hunters, if it's a type of situation where they go, all right, well, I mean, this one, it doesn't look like one we're going to win. Let's swap some other people in, give some players some more experience. We might be seeing something like that. Uh, otherwise, you know, we'll, we'll find out. Well, they are going to be swapping uh, the players with J names uh, for a starter. Oh, yeah. If there the lobby, If the lobby we're seeing right now is accurate, which it probably is, is that Jinmu Spoiler out alert. Jimmy is coming on in. Yeah, that's right. We're, we're spoiling all because we have access to the master feed here. We, we see in real time. <laughs> We can see everything. That's right. I have like three monitors in front of me and everything's got a different Overwatch thing on it. But yes, that's right. The one that's showing me the lobby right now does show that Jimmy, for the moment, has been uh, swapped in another spot yet to fill. We also have Yveltal coming in as well for the Hunters this game. So it's like I was kind of saying, like Shanghai just is destroying you this match. So why not? Give another roster a little bit of a, of a try, you know, give them some, uh, you know, not that some of these players need more experience, but use it as a, a little bit of a testing ground as you kind of get set. Because you were saying uh, earlier, ZP, that it really kind of seemed like Chengdu is on the same page as a lot of other teams yes. in the Overwatch League right now, where this is a meta that they are still very much figuring out. But from the indications we've seen from Shanghai, it almost seems like this is a meta that they were born to play. They look so comfortable with the heroes that are available right now. Yeah, and I mean, also you think about the coordination you're seeing with your two, where, you know, there are times, especially when they were struggling in the main melee, where, you know, people would look at Shanghai and they go, ooh, I, I don't know about giving up uh, Fearless, uh, letting Fearless go, putting yeah. in Fate, like, you know, how good is Fate really? Well, I think if you've been skeptical about Fate, you have to look at today's game and go, okay, this is pretty good from Fate. Fate has been in perfect yeah. sync with Fleta the entire time, so, I mean, it's not even just that they're playing well on an individual level, it's that... On a coordination level, the Dragons have seemingly fixed some of the flaws that they had from the May Melee and they've done yeah. it into a new meta here in the June Jiao. So it, it, it's horrifying if you're another team in APAC looking at this going, oh, I guess the Dragons aren't going to be really good this year. Uh-oh. <laughs> yep. And uh, as you can see, there were some swaps. Uh, we even have uh, Farway 1987 coming in as well for the uh, Chengdu Hunters. So the Hunters swapping the roster up a little bit as we go into Junkertown for what could be our final map of the day. But hey, it's not over till it's over, ZP. You never know. You never know well, if this is going to be it. This is going to be the, the magic mix that uh, makes it work. Well, Fang Team is also a verse sweep specialist, historically speaking, it'd be the Chengdu Hunters. They're, they're a team you never count out until you know, the very final yeah. point goes off and they are officially gone. Uh, Why do you think there's a danger sign on that outhouse? I mean, honestly, I mean, it's us. It's Australia. You can put a danger sign everywhere, and it's probably accurate. Let's true. be real. You never know. There's like a trapdoor spider in that thing or something, you know? Yeah. I mean, just, just breathing the air just place. waiting. Like you open the door, and the cassowary just disembowels you. Yep. Uh, don't but get me wrong. I love Australia from the time I was there. Yeah, me but too. Also very scared of everything there. <laughs> Wildlife-wise. But we're getting into it, Doa. The gates are open. It's the Hunters. Oh, well, they get hit with the Bionade. Three people immediately looking for cover. Uh, they, but still, they do indeed. Offensive Arisa, Pirate Ship-esque, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, you can get... Uh, it's, it's you know, not quite the, the Pirate Ship of old with the Bastion and, and uh, you know, sometimes the, the second shield. You're not going to have the Reinhardt, obviously, here in the June Jaws. But, uh, you know, put the Arisa on the payload. It's a good sort of hard point for everyone to play from. And Elsa over on the Sigma can offer a little bit of protection in the, a similar way. Ooh, nice. A nice accretion into Jagon to set that one up. Wow, that was yeah, a that was smooth bad. Sigma play right there from, uh, from Elsa. That was a true combo, as they say in the fighting game world. Yeah, as Gaga served it up, Elsa knocked it down. And yeah, that yeah. was really, really good between the two. And Elsa operating off the flank, you know, where Sigmas generally like to be. And yeah, that just caught the Dragons off guard entirely. And 
yeah, really, really well executed here by the Hunters. And, you know, even the retake here is going to be a little bit awkward for the Dragons. We're coming out from here. You know, it, it's easy for the Hunters to snowball this to a degree. Yeah. Well, extra okay, cast they just don't day. go for it. For the Hunters, yeah, I mean, why not uh, just get a really good defense going here on B? And, I think that's uh, smart. I'm kind of in shock. That was fast. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was one fight, and it was just one combo, yeah. really, that decided it. But I think for the Dragon, just slowing it down, going for point B, I mean, teams will often try and go for it. But if they lost that, though, the snowball potential, like I said, very high. So I, I think this is smart. Just try and slow things down a bit. Yeah, that's right. All right, Leave uh, finds one on the Void, so the pressure just keeps coming. And Leave doing a good job of playing that Hanzo that is just adding in damage from the front and just kind of keeping the payload going. Elsa manages to take down Void as well, winning the Sigma 1v1, and you know what? The Hunters still pushing this payload forward. Veltal going Battle Mercy here, wins a 1v1 in support <laughs> combat, and gets the res in the end. You'd love to see it. Uh, you said support combat way too easily there. It just rolled off the tongue as... Uh we just doing it for years, do this on Hanzo. But we hyped up this Hanzo at the beginning, and for good reason. Uh, yeah, that's good. It's working really well. But support all combat. Oh, man. Uh, what, what have you done? Saying it for years, man. The game's coming out soon. Don't worry. <laughs> By soon, I mean probably never, but I can dream. <laughs> it's a dream come true for the Hunters on this push, as uh, they have a ton of time here on point C. Now, the question is, with all these outs, can Shanghai find some sort of hardcore defense? Lip gets an early pick on the leave. That's a good start. Even with the Reds coming in, it does delay things a little bit. Yeah, and the problem here is that they're identifying Leave. You can't, can't let Leave do Ooh. what he's been doing. Void going for the Flux gets stunned in the middle of it. Not going to get the damage as a result. Still trying yeah. to push forward, but this is a little bit problematic, even with the nail, though, as uh, Elsa <laughs> These are just so fighting sad. tooth and nail, going, I'm not scared. <laughs> I got Flux my own. How would you like to see the ground Ooh. as Void is just getting beaten this entire round, Doa? The resurrection oh, Void just gets up. rezzed again anyway, though. Yeah, it doesn't even yeah. matter. He's back in the fight almost instantaneously far away. Does drop the wall here, manages to pick off Fate as well. And the Chengdu Hunters still trying to push this forward here with a couple more picks. Now that the tank's all the way, maybe they can do just that. Dragon Strike nearly ready to go for leave. More arrow and he'll have it. Well, that's all getting taken out by Fleta. That's at least one way to slow things down. Don't have to worry about the res and the one yeah. hero that cannot be res. As Fleta goes into the Ooh. pack, Fleta's had enough off the flank on the Hanzo. Two already down. And the Dragon's going to swap this thing here. It's a little bit more Brawl centered on the payload. But Fleta goes down to leave and can leave, do it again. A lot of people down for him to do it. Yep, that's right. With Gaga out of the way as well, there's really no defense here. And while leave is actually using that Dragon Strike, I'm kind of shocked. Going for yeah, it, you should just tank down and <laughs> I beat. Yeah, that was an interesting time to use it. I have to imagine he's going to swap here. You think maybe the McCree is going to come out. Uh, but no, no, he's sticking on the Hanzo for the moment. All right. You know, sometimes when you see alts used in a little bit of a surprising manner, it means a hero swap is coming in, but this isn't the case. I mean, maybe they're going to the double level. sniper going. Double I sniper on both sides. That is interesting, isn't it, CP? Yeah, I mean, it's a Junkertown special, but you know, especially... Yeah. With Ryan not around, uh, Tracer not around, it's a little bit safe for the pull off. And, you know, th to a degree, it's just, okay, we have faith in our snipers, Ooh. you have faith in yours. Jimmy. Jimmy, though, gets lip. And, oh, oh. gets void. Jimmy's wow. starting to feel it. Jimmy shoot world. Yeah. Void comes back it's, again. Void's a zombie in this uh, game. He's just constantly coming back from the dead. Yeah, exactly. Can he leverage that into kills, though, into his uh, hold? It looks like they can for now, but that said, Lee jumps on top, gets the kill on the Lee Jagan. Looking for another one. On the lip in the back. But either way, they've got the Shanghai Dragons pushed back. That payload is still moving. I don't think the double sniper is working out well at all for the Dragons relative to the Hunters. The Hunters have been way more comfortable on Not that Lee. Much. Dragon <laughs> Strike off the corridors. Jimmy. Jimmy gets two on the other side. Just constant pressure from the Hanzo, from the Widow. And the Dragons are getting speed run here on Junkertown. Not much left to go. Void comes out. And no, uh, doesn't even go down here for the final time. That is, oof, that is quick Jimmy from the, the Destroyer. 2.27 left on the clock for the Chengdu Hunters. And uh, they have set a blistering pace here on Junkertown. 
Yeah, and I mean, I just think that anytime you go to like double sniper, it's like the hunters like playing. I mean, the hunters just as a team identity has been a team that over time really just thrives off of strong individual plays, which isn't to say other teams don't have good individual plays as well, but it's sort of, it, it's what the Hunters live for. Both Leave on the Hanzo and Jimmy on the Widow, you know, arguably the strongest hero for both the times. It, it worked out super well. And on top of that, Gaga and Elsa, you think about how it all got kicked off though. They had that coordination in the beginning between the Halt and the Accretion. So really, really every part of the Hunters working well on that attack. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, it was just a steamroller that was barely slowed down by the Shanghai Dragons. We'll see what they've got planned for attack here. But uh, th there were so many parts of that that were so impressive for that last round for the Hunters. Obviously, leave great Hanzo. Jimmy really impressed on the Widowmaker, I thought. And then Elsa was making a lot of really good picks, a lot of really good accretions on that Sigma and just generally being a, a real uh, annoying player to have on the flank. And also the Hunters, they're not changing up. They're going, you know what? We like the Snipers on the attack. We're going to like it yeah. here, even on the defense. And Why the Dragon's not? going, all right, we'll fight you on the exact same terms here. Hanzo Widow v. Hanzo Widow. And this is something you'd only have seen with your pools, Doug. Jimmy down to like one HP there for a moment. That was nearly a pick to start things off, but managed to get away. Meanwhile, Fate from behind. Looking for the kill on the far away here, but not doing a ton of damage. Yeah, it's going to be <laughs> the support versus the well, tank, and Fate's going to have to back off and grab the health back. Yeah, and I mean, this, this, is, this is really kind of chaos on both sides and how it's going to break down. Where chaos. It's looking for individual plays on both ends. Ooh. Fate, just a bit of disruption on the way back into the fight. Leave, looking for anything on the Hanzo. Leave right I now. Mean, I, like what, I like what Fate's doing a lot. I mean, he's dislodging the people on the high ground, dislodging the vulnerable snipers, the supports, trying to give his team some angles. Lip does find the kill on the leave there. Veltal there with the res anyway. Oh, Jimmy, though. He's been winning that sniper 1v1 pretty much all map so far. Yeah, I think that's a really great point, just because he has been consistent and... You know, anytime you're winning the sniper battles in the way that Jimmy is, just especially when it's sniper, sniper v sniper, sniper. It, <laughs> uh, honestly, the dragons at some point they're gonna have to consider swappy because you have to look at it and go, well, we're actually getting beaten in the spirit. We're getting beaten pretty badly, and yeah, you know, already about two minutes almost off the clock. I mean, Jimmy's uh, making a name for himself right now as a Widowmaker specialist on this map. We knew he had some uh, hit scan talent. Like, but he's uh, sure showing it off now. And that was just a great halt into a kill from Elsa on the lift there, too. Credit to Gaga for having a lot of really nice right clicks in this series as well. And you think and about the style of game here, Doa, that's changed, where prior to this, Dragons were able to play like a super coordinated dive style. Now they have to play the individual play versus individual play on sniper style. And it's been tough, right. but Fate Ooh. makes it a little bit easy. Why, why win the sniper battle versus Jimmy when you can just send Fate into the back? Both that's snipers right. down, a huge opportunity, and yet the res is there, the Dragon Strike gets lit, and the Hunters still could win this or at the very least delay. I mean, the alts come out and they put him to good use. Far away drops the uh, window as well. Can they turn that into another couple kills after losing leave? It might be tough. Elsa down, but it's exactly like uh, what you said. Uh, Fate, you know, was hunting for those picks in the back line and he finally found some. Gets a kill into uh, Veltal as well. And so it took a while, but it paid off. Yeah. And the dragons finally look like they might be able to finish point A. Yeah, I mean, the problem that oh, they yeah. have here is that the Hunters got through point A a lot quicker. So they're already fighting behind time, but Void getting the staggers onto Leave, onto wow. Jimmy here in the back, actually helps out a lot, though, because not only are they getting to secure point A, but they have time to set up here on point B without worrying as much about the threat. That's right. Fate continuing to just be this really annoying flanking tank. You'll have to see it. Fate's doing a lot to keep this open for the Dragons right now, where in the DPS v DPS matchup, Leave and Jimmy have had the numbers of Flood and Lip. Now, Leave swapping yeah. to the Genji here is a little bit interesting. I thought the Hanzo was working fine, but you know, maybe Fate pressure got a little bit too much. Now Leave looking pressure another way, looking for that Void, works. and uh, nowhere to go. Yep, just walks up and uh, takes out Void with a series of right clicks. 20%. Oh, this no, is back too line. good this for Leave the setup. He's waiting on her 22 HP. Has to give it soon. Goes Ooh. in, finds Izayaki. Back and forth oh. he goes. 
Smart, not to go in there. Let, let someone else it's finish Genji's it off. Genji's paradise. I mean, yeah, you sent Gaga in to, uh, to finish that one up. Just smart team play there. Gaga I in the wrecking ball. Like, I'll take over. When you said a Genji's paradise, like, definitely uh, <laughs> heard that musically, though. Uh, he's been living most of his life uh, in a Genji's paradise. Yeah. Spending most of his life. I messed that up. It's I'm a child of the 90s, though, ZP, believe me. <laughs> so are you, 63. though. Yeah, it's true. looking for another one. Uh-oh. <laughs> he's down. Flood hits him with the dragon strike. No getting back up from that one. Gaga gets caught with that, too. And now Shanghai finds the kills to move forward. Yeah, but again, time's been burned off the clock here for the Hunters. I think they'd still want to get one more fight here on B if possible. And that's going to be hard with uh, Vettel and Elsa just fighting against the world here. But they're still alive. They're still actually able to juke a lot of the pressure. Respawns are coming back in, and Leaves getting real close to the blade. Yeah, he is. He is indeed. Uh, EJ gone down to so the mercy out of the way that's going to leave things a little bit more open for leave no no pun intended there that just sort of slipped out is yaki oh down right as he got is the he... nano boost that's big now leave on his own manages to get the reflect Ooh. on the flat up but the a hero comes through anyway uh, no the trade's totally fine there leaves happy yeah. with that he's gonna be able to come back with sure. blade blood is dead this is really good for the hunters so far though they only have to defend this for another minute 15 the blade coming up on deck and you know, the double snipers are going to the wayside here as Flutta now going to the Echo for you know, what could yep. be one of the final pushes coming up. Well, point two, definitely the point where the double sniper works the worst. Oh, Gaga sick. manages to get back lines for another kill and EJ gone. The, the Wrecking Balls have really been kind of the story here on this map so far, as far as the harassment, as far as the displacement goes. Flutta down again, leave with another kill there. Still a bit of a brawl, but that payload is not moving. It's not moving at all. 45 seconds left to go. Gaga. Just an incredible play to buy uh -oh. extra time. And now here Boy's comes Blade from Leaf. What's it going to get? Slices down Void again. Leaf is finding Void in dark corners. And oh, has to put the Blade away. But <laughs> enough has been done here, Doa. Gaga and Leaf, they're just going to continue moving forward. Fate running for his very life. Jimmy now. Rotating Watch off the side. Watch field from uh, far away to keep Leaf up there. Elsa? Uh, they do help find a kill on the lit. Lee Jigon there with the res. Damage thrown in anyway, and the big thing is nobody's on the payload. Boy finally gets a kill on the far away, but can they get back to also the payload danger. in time? They are. Also needs to get away. Jimmy got flooded in the middle of all that, though, and you're right. Time is such a huge issue now. Two seconds left to go. Fate's able to get down Jimmy the Overtime. Dragon, struggling to keep this going. Gaga's out of the fight, and Fate continuing to get value into the pack by the battle versus Sigma takes him down. And Fate what? is keeping the dragons alive here, but time still not on their side. No, not on their side at all, but they have a chance at least to get a little bit more of it with a point B take if they can just finish us off. You've all taught Alyssa and Elsa fall, and that should be enough. It is. So point B. Oh, maybe I spoke too soon. They're going to go for one last fight here. Uh, and far away, able to take down too early. Gaga with Minefield, a Yo. lot thrown out. Leave, he's built up the plate, and he has oh. no HP. Fake still around, pushing it through. Minute 22 yeah. left, though, Doa. That is not much time here for point C. No, they've got to go uh, really fast. And the thing is, they are still going to be at least a minute down, more than a minute down to the Hunters, even if they do finish. I mean, with the, the rate that payload moves, it's going to be almost impossible to finish it uh, not in overtime, you know? Yeah, I mean, at the very least there, it's escort where you get another attack no matter what, but still like right now. Yeah. Oh, slept up. Wait, but he's woken up. Why would you wake him up? Oh, absolute <laughs> disaster. Could have been worse. Well, Takes out his yeah, Yaki, Res is going to be there. They trusted they had the kill, and luckily for them, they did indeed. Uh, Shanghai Dragons, though, still pushing forward, and now they do have small Ooh, that was close for Lip. Oh! One well, in danger. Fate, though, Jimmy he's like, down. nah, nah, forget the Widow 1v1. Dude, Fate is starting to figure out the Hunter's defense here. Fate is the one going to the back, Look getting good disruption, getting solo picks onto those in the back line. And now the Dragons looking to reclaim some time as Fate gets another. Veltel down in the back. But can the Dragons keep up the momentum here, Doa? 19 seconds left to go. They cannot be stopped. If they are, it's over. Oh. Uh, Fate's Wrecking Ball looks pretty good. I love how he just boops the uh, Widowmaker, gets her off of the uh, aim for a moment, turns around, helps Flood to pick up a couple of kills. So Shanghai Dragons continuing to push forward here. Ooh, the Orisa copy. Interesting for the halt to keep people away from the payload. He's got the Supercharger right. too. Fills it up quickly, drops it on down. The Dragons.
finish Dude. out Junkertown against the odds. It almost no time for point C. But I feel like as we were watching this here, Doa, fate just grew in power as the round went on. And it just got to a point where, oh, Jimmy's in the back. I'll neutralize Jimmy. You saw the impact of the snipers fade as it went on. And of course, Leaf yep. had the swap. And you know, as the swaps evolved, Jimmy's effectiveness went down just because of how things change. And also the fact that fate was just right place, right time, almost all the time. Yeah. I mean, that was the most impressive thing for me is, is that, you know, over time, fate just got better and better at finding those flanking angles on the wrecking ball and just making the snipers' lives miserable. And uh, that ended up being a big part of what got Shanghai the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the third point there. And now, if you're the Hunters, you're worried, right? Because you're down 0-2 in this series. You had a great attack round. You thought you were having a really good defensive round, and they finished it anyway. That is tilting. This is not only a test of skill for the Hunters, but this is a test of mental stamina now, too. Yeah, and all right, you, you take a look at this. I, the one thing I'd like to see for the Dragons here, don't let the Hunters drag you down to where the Hunters like to play in terms of double sniper. Like, respect right. the fact that the Hunters are probably better than you at the double sniper setup. Run something different. And it looks like the Dragons are going to be Ooh. running with something different here. Lip opening. Surely, surely that was just for an early oh. <laughs> Fleta, already gone. Ah, uh, well, they tried, but uh, the cannon didn't even get on board the pirate ship there as Fleta dropped. Is he going to stick with the Bastion? Does he go can. Hanzo? You can. It feels bad, but you can. No, nope, no, there's a swap. Okay, yeah. I was like, all right. All right, no pirate I, ship this time. Yeah, I understand why they're opening with this. I mean, it still makes sense, but man, the Hunters look so much better in this a recent double sniper via recent double sniper, and we'll see if Fleta and Lip can find something, but this is where Jimmy and Leave look their best. Yep. Yep, it certainly has been. Uh, Shanghai still continuing to try to push a little bit here, now breaking off to try to find those angles. They need some picks if they're going to really push it any farther. Sonic Arrow. There's fate. Okay. That's so quick. Already yep. walls up for Jimmy. Just think about the amount of damage he had to do to oh, the get flank. that up so quickly. Looking. Looking. Could be huge. Doesn't find it just yet. Oh, take Ooh, it down. Sort of. <laughs> it's a I trade, mean, though. You take on now the fight. Yeah. Yeah, still that's work. right. The Mercy down for Shanghai is huge for the Hunters. They're going to be able to use that to really push forward here and get them off defense. That said, Shanghai finds the, the kills. It's not over yet. They finish it. You didn't get much off that flank. That looked deadly. Then the camera swapped and no one went down. And the Dragons keep them when I'm going. So they've gotten over the first hurdle, something that did not go well for them the first time around. Yeah. Able to dodge Jimmy just well enough. And now they've gotten to the part where the Dragons got a lot of momentum. And... I think fate will stay on the Arisa for now, just because of the super charge. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to leave that payload, right? Yeah. So you're gonna, the Arisa is gonna be one of the best heroes you've got in terms of just sitting there, right? Being a slightly mobile turret. But you kind of look at Shanghai and you kind of start to think download complete. They've been certainly handling the hunters better on this round. Here comes a dragon strike right on the payload. You gotta back off it for a moment. Fate though uses the shift to cut his damage intake. And that helps him stay alive despite the fact that they lose Lip. Shanghai still pushing forward ZP. Yeah, and the resurrection comes back in. Lip is ready to play once more. And Void sitting there. Flux ready to go. The Dragon Strike out from Flutter. Lip and Flutter connecting. Not Flutter like continues on the Hanzo. Finally goes down to Jimmy. But the Dragons with more power on this payload. They're keeping it going. We're in overtime here, Dylan. And the spawns. Such a problem now for the Hunters. They just have to sit here, wait to respawn as the Dragons get to keep the payload moving forward. Oh no. This is a nightmare for the Chengdu Hunters. I mean, like I said, it was going to be a test of mental fortitude, and right now they are not passing that test. Is you do not want to give up multiple points in overtime like this. It just feels worse than it looks, if you can believe that. But Shanghai, they're looking for that 3-0 in this series. They are looking yeah. like they might get it. They are rejuvenated right now. Leaf already almost down super low. Immortality field comes out. I think he already might have shaken the pressure before that. But, oh, not for long. Void. Such Maybe. revenge for Void, given how this has gone on Junkertown, where usually there's Leaf on right. the other side. Flata, meanwhile, off on the flank. The Hunters just getting assaulted from all ends here, Doa, as the Dragons, they got their second wind and then some. 
I mean, the hunters have become the hunted here, right? I mean, where they were trying to find all those angles, now they're the ones needing to check their corners as a couple more kills come in, following Gaga go down. Lee manages to turn one around on the lip. But with Flooded's Dragon Strike nearly there, oh, he uh -oh. fell tall, they can kill him, it's huge. Oh, that, that was nearly a gift to Flutta. Izayaki, though, able to take down Juventus. Support the support there. The bloodthirst is real. Void takes down Elsa, and the Hunters are collapsing, though. There's no other way to say it. You got to do it. I mean, you got to just jump on the payload right now if you're the Hunters. You got to put the bodies on the cart, but I don't think the Shanghai Dragons will be slowed down. They do it. They get the finish in overtime. You said it, Hanzo. What a well, finish. That, I, I think you said it best in the middle of it, download complete, where at, at yes. the mirror, the, things only turned around for the Dragons the first round of their attack when they got to swap things up, when it wasn't quite double sniper v double sniper, when it went into terrain that was less wide open, right? right. And, and Fate was able to open things up on ball. Then they go for their second round of attack, and they're able to dodge Jimmy just well enough. Leave doesn't get as much off the Hanzo flank. Fleta comes alive on the Hanzo himself. It, it's like everything flipped Doa as the Dragons realized, hey, we can actually play this style and you're not gonna beat us at this again. Yeah. And now, you know, again, if, if you are the Chengdu Hunters, you just have to think to yourself, all right, we have 327 on the clock. It's a lot of time. It's, it's going to be tough. We can equalize. We can send this to a crazy extra, you know, third attack round. But you know, you know, it, with the, some of the subs coming in, the mental's going to be shaky on the team. You know, it's, it's got to be at this point. Yeah, I would just grab one of those bags of money and run, you know? <laughs> yeah, pretty take much. A, I mean, this is uh, as, as a mental. Okay, well, that's a good way oh, to restore oh, your mental. Okay. Just take yeah. that look no. Now, Rez is going to be there. So it, it's not the most massive swing, but you know, guess what? Good. You get another pick in the next uh, 20 seconds. They're not coming back. Yep. Oh, uh, but then again, you don't want to have your supports get picked as well. You've got the res, but then leave falls immediately. Mercy doesn't have enough reses for this. Fleta finding a lot of free shots on the payload. Is Yaki is down Yaki now, not? though, so Shanghai needs to proceed with caution. Yeah, I mean, the healing output there is just simply going to be non-existent, and Chengdu winning the flank game pretty decisively right now. And this is where momentum really becomes a big problem, where you're down in players, and the Hunters, I love how they're playing this go. They're coming in from both sides, Gaga from behind, Lee yeah. from the front, and no matter where the Dragons went, it was death. Yep. Yep, they had that opportunity. They picked off one tank, they picked off one support, and then they knew they could just pinch the rest of the team behind the building there, and that was really well identified and executed by the Hunters. And that's encouraging to see. You know, again, after that last round, I mean, we've all played those ranked games where where the <laughs> enemy team does that to us. Like, I mean, obviously a pro team is going to be a bit more resilient to it, but you know it's not fun. And So to have a smooth point day, a well-executed point day like that for the Hunters is an encouraging sign. And now this is where they could be even more aggressive here, right? Where I wouldn't be surprised if the Valk comes out pretty early from Yvetel just to set the tone to let the Hunters continue bring the fight to Shanghai. All the while, though, remember, you're running double sniper. Either team can swing it at a moment's notice. That's going to be Lip opening up with the recon site. Also, though, taking the battle, the void here at the bottom now. Switching yep. gears here a little bit, going for the flux, going for his support, oh. going to be there. Sigma v Sigma down here, and point goes down. <laughs> I mean, Sigma v Sigma looks funny. I mean, like, how does Gravita, how does, uh, you know, Gravitic Flux even affect an, an enemy Sigma, right? If it's a 1v1. I don't know well, how that works lore wise. Explain you that. You never see the toes TV. touch the ground, though. That, that's the real, like, confusing part. He, he comes down and he stubs his toes really bad. That's that's how you kill him in the 1v1. <laughs> I suppose so. Well, speaking of getting killed, leaving Juventus down as Lip was able to find the opening. And now for the Hunters, they had a little bit of bonus time here, though. They had certainly more time overall, but down to a minute as the Dragons look to be pretty resolute here. Opening up the Supercharger. Boy, back into the fray. Has the Flux ready. Doesn't need to use it. The front line already oh, getting devastated. One. Okay, decides to use it for revenge. <laughs> you slam <laughs> me, right. I slam you. <laughs> I guess so. Yep, reminds me of this Street Shark named Big Slamu. He uh, oh, didn't wear shoes either. I don't think. Maybe he did. Yeah, but he had a giant shark. He's got weird, man. It's just like, are you something that lives in the water? 
you want attitude? It's 5am. I'm going to go on these tangents. <laughs> and you're just going to have to come along for the ride, ZP. Hey, I, I remember the Street Sharks, but uh, I was more of a Turtles person myself. They you know, always go for the original. Everyone hey. was. Everyone was. Pleta well, in the back. Yeah. 18 seconds left to go. Yeah, Shanghai and have a chance to end the series right here again. They put the nano boost onto Fleta over on his fan favorite Far Lip and his Yaki down though. It's That's all in the Fleta opening. right now. Can he deadlift one last time? Concussive with the it? side. Ooh, he Doesn't can't escape from leave. Leave and Gaga keeping it alive. Leave is so close to flying. Fleta couldn't land the last rocket. And letting Leave live is a tragic mistake. Three in for the hunters <laughs> as they look to keep this alive. Yaki. Here does. What are you yeah. there? It's like, my team is gone. What, what do you want from me? Just, just end Don't it. mind me. I'm just an old woman. <laughs> Poor Anna. I mean, I always fear anyone uh, that old that's still living in Australia after it's been nuked. I mean, there's more than meets the eye there, Noah. Let's be real. Sure. Rest so many crocodiles at that point. <laughs> Pretty much. But overtime is in progress. The Hunters looking to stay alive. They're doing it. it They're doing it. It's been a crazy round of Junker Town, but oh, guess what? The barrage, Flutter though. has the, the barrage. barrage. They only need one fight. Fleta coming go. on in and over. Ooh. In over the top. It's from so high up. Is it going to do anything? No. It just gives Jimmy a clean shot. The return is there. And Jimmy up and over. The Hunter's still alive. And this I mean, is now I had, painful I had, for the Dragons. I had high hopes for that barrage, ZP. There was no sleep dart on the other side to worry about, but there was an immortality field. And like you said, the distance made it tough to concentrate the fire of those rockets. That said, the Hunter's still pushing forward here. And are you kidding me, ZB? Are we actually going to see this? The 6 to is 6 it be is more six. likely than you think. But they have to get through Void's Flux to stand a chance. Here we go, Void. Oh, flux, under flux. pressure. Waiting, waiting, waiting. What's he going to get? Put it. He All got right, two somehow on the outskirts. And Fleta following through oh, takes huge. down that's the huge. after the Flux. And that's going to be it for Dragons. It's a 3-0. Wow, the Dragons get the 3-0. But the Hunters made them work for it. In the end, that's for sure. You could see a little bit of relief on the faces of the Shanghai Dragons, except for Fate. He remains impassive, uh, not not really moving at all. Kind of freaky. But anyway, Shanghai <laughs> does win and gets a good start off to uh, the June joust here and remedies an issue that they had earlier in the season where they did get 3-0'd by the Chengdu Hunters. Well, turnabout is fair play, as they say, and they get their own 3-0 here in their first series in June. And ZP. They looked dominant in uh, two out of those three maps. Yeah, uh, Junkertown is sort of weird where the Hunters look dominant to start things out and the, you know, the Dragons sort of had to adapt and gain in strength over the course of the series where, you know, by far the, the biggest just wow story to me and looking at Junkertown was how Fate was able to bring things alive on the first Shanghai attack where you oh, know, yeah. they, they were really troubled by the double sniper power that the Hunters had going on. It was Fate that goes, no, no, no. I'm going to claw our way back into this. I'm going to go back there. I'm going to take down Jimmy. I'm going to take down basically anyone who's back there. Support. All fair game. Yeah, F Fate just keeps them in it. And uh, honestly, incredible performance by him. Yep, that's right. And uh, because of that incredible performance, he is our player of the match. Fate, of course, finding his place on the Shanghai Dragons, playing so well today. And you can see from the Winston to the Wrecking Ball, and it really was, in my opinion, ZB, that Wrecking Ball on Junkertown that was so impressive to watch that really kind of gave the Shanghai Dragons the go-ahead six points that they needed to win that map. Uh, really do, doing a great job of single-handedly handling the double sniper. Yeah, I mean, he created the space and breathing room needed for the rest of the Dragons to sort of go, okay, let's stop and think about this. We can still win this game. And obviously, as they right. get to their second attack, it's not fate on the ball anymore. But, you know, enough was done to save the Dragons on that first attack that, you know, they had time to sort of regroup, rethink, and come out way stronger on the second attack. But none of that happens if fate doesn't put on just an enormous lifting of the rest of his team on ball. So. You know, Fate, one of the players that's obviously uh, had one of the longest uh, pro Overwatch careers at this point overall. I mean, he goes way, way back before yep. the Overwatch League even began. He was making waves in uh, the NA scene initially. So, uh, you know, and, and, and of course, Korea before that. But uh, it's it's great to see him finding, I think, kind of a, a new, you know, a new step forward in his career right now as he looks like he's really fitting in well in the Shanghai Dragons roster. 
Yeah, and I mean, there were some concerns with the dragons. Like I said, you could look back to last stage. People went, oh, just imagine if you had Fearless. And okay, yeah, fair. Fearless, sure. of course, uh, being He's on the team tank. that won it all and looked incredible the entire way through. But yeah. I, I feel like if Fake could continue to play at the level he played at here today, a lot of those, but what about Fearless comments, you know, as good as Fearless is, might start going to the wayside because Fate just looked really, really good today on his own. He did. Yeah, and it's encouraging to see, especially if you're a Dragons fan that uh, wants maybe a win at the end of uh, the June Joust. We'll see if they can keep the, up the momentum. But for now, we're going to go to a quick break. Don't go anywhere, though, because there's a lot more Overwatch League action coming at you right after this. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Xfinity, the preferred internet provider of the Overwatch League. Welcome back to the Overwatch League. Uh, ZP, that was that was a pretty amazing match that we just saw. Shanghai Dragons able to take a 3 out. That leads us into talking about something. Let's let's make some bold predictions. This is a game break. Let's do some Pringles bold predictions. So ZP, hit me with your uh, your bold prediction here. Well, go my ahead. bold prediction first. here is that you know terminology yeah. in the Overwatch scene always evolves. And my bold prediction is when that Flood Eclipse gets out there, when you saw how quick Flood built that Echo Blade, a new unit of measurement has been born here, where you have the ACAM Blade going the ages past, the no things being a little bit on the slower side. Fleta, Echo Blade, complete opposite, Doha. Has to be to denote something incredibly fast. It's a new unit of measurement. That's my bold prediction. That's what I got. All right, fair enough, fair enough. All right, well, my bold prediction uh, doesn't even really have anything to do with the Shanghai Dragons, actually. I'm going to go one step further and uh, say, although the Shanghai Dragons are looking great so far in this meta, the June Joust will be the, once again, rise of the Soul Dynasty. That's right, you hear, heard it here first, folks. The Soul Dynasty will win the June Joust. It doesn't get uh, any much more bolder of a prediction than predicting the winner of a team that isn't even playing uh, today. There you go, ZP. That's that's all I got. I'm not afraid. I'm all not afraid I have to say is, I just like wonder, that. like, is Arnold's paycheck cleared now? Is it clearing later? What, what, what's no. going on? I was not expecting just, a dynasty out of nowhere. Like, what? It's just the power of Pringles, man. It just uh, okay, uh, gives fair me enough, the fair enough. gives me the boldness to make those bold predictions. There you go. All right, Pringles, fair. bold predictions. Doesn't get much more bold than that, I think. Yeah, no, that, that's pretty bold, pretty spicy. There you go. All right. Well, don't go in here, guys. We got New York Excelsior versus Philadelphia Fusion. <laughs> when we come back for more bold gameplay, at least here on the Overwatch League, we'll see you in just a few. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Pringles. Stay in the game.
안녕하세요. 필라델피아 퓨전에서 DPS를 맡고 있는 카르페 이재혁이라고 합니다. 필라를 맡고 있는 알람 김경보입니다. 정규 시즌 성적은 연습 시간에 비해서 되게 잘 나왔던 것 같아요. 오, 대세 바로. 그냥 거리 나눠주고. 오, 나눠면 거리. 우와, 우와, 이거 이거 그냥 믿음이 나노. 우와, 우와. 아, 저도 있거든요. 이렇게 말이죠. 단독 몇 명이에요. 와, 이거 너무 잘 나왔어요. 야, 이 병경기 속에서 결국 여기까지 최종 됐다. 승자는 필라델피아 퓨전입니다. 제가 합류를 하고 나서 11차의 경기를 치렀거든요. 다른 팀 3달, 4달 연습한 거에 비해서 우리 팀의 11 연습량이 더 뛰어나지 않았나. 그 말은 다음 토너먼트에서 저희가 우승한다는 얘기겠죠. 저희 요즘 너무 행복해요. 요즘 행복하고 있는 것 같아요. <웃음> 이번 정규 시즌에서 경기 결과가 좋지가 않았는데 새로운 멤버들도 또 왔고 하니까 천천히 이제 좀 합을 맞추고 있다고 생각하고 있어가지고 자, 뉴욕 엑센시어 빠르게 뚫을 수도 있습니다. 오! 블로라! 한 바퀴 아니면 뉴욕 불어요! 아, 이러면 아 수비가 블랙파! 이게 마지막 기회였는데! 각자만의 색깔이 좀 있다 하잖아? 이제 그런 좀 장점이 많이 큰것 같아요. 저희 팀이 차라리 신생 팀이라서 나중에 되면 더 잘할 것 같아요. 아이비 선수가 작년까지 저희 팀이었거든요. 뉴욕에 가서 좀 헤매는 느낌? 좀 망가진 것 같기도 하고. 꽃길인 줄 알고 보내줬는데 알고 보니 사방이 지뢰밭이더라고요. 꽃씨도 심었고 물도 줬으니까 이제 꽃만 피면 될것 같다. 개개인 피지컬은 확실히 좋은데 적응하는 부분에서 문제가 있었던 것 같아요. 누구나 처음은 있잖아요. 이제 시험 끝났어요. 앙카야, 너 요즘 대회 많이 나오던데 너도 좀 많이 해야겠더라? 너 이제 후보 아니다. 형 작년 시즌 기억 안 나? 형 대회에서 실수 많이 해서 코치님이 나 많이 내보냈던 거. 안 들려, 안 들려. 뉴욕의 장점은 쪼낙이 있다? 근데 쪼낙밖에 없다? 누가 누군지 잘 모르겠어요. 존재감이 없다고 해야 하나? 아. 이번 경기에서 제가 잘 보여드리겠습니다. 퓨전의 약점은 메인 일로 쪽인 것 같고요. 후비 선수 루시 부패기가 좀 그렇더라고요. 헤더 선수 메이드역 이상하게 치던데. <웃음> 이런 거 말해도 되나? 벽으로 팀원을 막더라고요. 벽을 막는 게 아니라. 채로가 경기에 막혀 있었는데 저 조작 선수 입장을 좀 물어봐야 되지 않나? <웃음> 저 프로라서 잡힌 줄 알았어요. 그래서 좀 웃겼다? 헤더 선수 메이드역 연습 많이 하고 오셨죠? 네, 어제 안 그래도 루슈랑 등반 좀 했어요. <웃음> 걔네는 다 문제인데 탱커가 제일 문제예요. 다 저희한테 줬잖아. 왜 주는지 모르겠어요. 저희가 고맙죠. 그건 인정하는. 만원 삼촌 나이가 많이 드셔서 방벽 뜨는 게 많이 힘들어 보여요. 모니터 너무 오래 보지 마시고요. 눈도 침침하신데. 음... 저희 팀의 강점은 다 어리다는 거? 스킬도 빠르고 반성 빠른 거. 필연은 일단 나이가 많기 때문에 올해 안에 발발 될것 같아요. 저희한테 손 이렇게 늙어서 가망이 없다. 아, 그건 좀 노잼입니다. 저희 팀은 다 베테랑 선수들로 구성이 돼 있어서 대회 때더 애들이 집중도 잘하고 짬에서 나오는 바이브가 있다는 거죠. 뉴욕은 확실히 신인이라 그런지 대회만 나오면 아주 발발 떨던데요. 예상 스코어는 무조건 3대 0. 귀엽네요. 누가 0이죠? 3대0은 좀 그러니까 3대2로 저희가 이기는 거죠. <웃음> 저희가 또 실수를 많이 하면 1점 정도는 줄 수도 있을 것 같아요. 아, 도발하면 안 되는데. 저는 또락 형한테 좀 도발적인 거좀 하고 싶어요. 박지영, 원래 형이 제일 잘했었잖아. 근데 그건 다 옛날 얘기고 이제 나인 것 같아요. 총한번 쏠까요? 저희는 이제 뜨는 애고 필라델피아 퓨전은 이제 지내는 애네요. 필라델피아 퓨전의 석양이 준다. 다음. 감사합니다. 안 Hey, welcome back to the Overwatch League, and uh, hello to everybody watching the Encore broadcast again. Here we are, Doa and ZP about to cast a really awesome game of Overwatch, or perhaps a couple, a couple awesome games, actually. NYXL versus Philadelphia Fusion, obviously Fusion, a team that uh, exceeded expectations by quite a bit in the May Melee, I think. Uh, doing better overall than a lot of people were expecting, especially with some of the visa issues that they were having with some of their players coming in and really performing well. NYXL on the other side is a team that has so much talent, but just seems to kind of struggle putting it together. They did okay, but I think people were looking for a little bit more. Uh, going into this series, ZP, kind of, what are your expectations? Uh, how do you rate this? 
I mean, my expectations is that if the Fusion carry on with how they played in the main melee, I think that this should be a relatively easy victory for the Fusion around the lines of a 3-1. But yeah. New York is also a team with a lot of potential on it. That the potential is not really realized over the course of the main melee. They're a team that also came in for whatever it's worth now, which is, by the way, not a lot, especially after we see results. But they were a team that in True. the preseason people are high on them on scrim bucks so in theory there's a point where new york can put it all together but they were a team that was often not on the same page and out of sync over the course of the main melees so you know now we get to see will the june joust be any different for the excelsior fair enough going back to the main melee for a moment uh we had some of you out there put together some amazing frag videos you saw a link at the bottom of your screen just a moment ago you can go back on the vod if you missed it go there vote for what you think is the best and uh, we'll find out who is chosen for the best frag video. I did a little bit of the judging on that as well. You did too, and there were some pretty good ones in there, so uh, go check that out. That said, let's take a look at uh, two of the players that we're gonna see here, two of the support players that we're gonna see go head to head in this series. It's gonna be Jonak and Alarm. Um, I still can't help but think of Alarm as a tank player because he was <laughs> way back when, when I casted him in Apex in Korea. He's obviously been a support for years since then, but I still kind of think of him that way. But but ZP, when you put anyone's numbers up against Jonak, it's it's gonna look a little bit rough. But that said, Jonak, he's got the healing <laughs> done, but everything else, Alarm is actually Ooh. coming out better right now. Yeah, extremely so. I mean, this is just dominant. Where I mean, look, Alarm is very arguably the very best support in the entire league. This is one of those things where if someone comes out of a time machine from season one, they go, what, what do you mean? What's happened to Jonak? It's not like that Jonak is necessarily like played bad or anything this season. It's that Alarm no. is excellence personified. Alarm is the support role right now. And it's what Alarm is one of the key reasons why the Fusion have done so well, where he has that unique power, a power that you used to see often in Jonak, you know, when he was at his peak of no fight is over while Alarm is still around. Alarm is able to turn fights that should not be turnable with just incredible plays. And it's one of the biggest reasons, like I said, that the Fusion are yeah. doing well right now. So uh, you look at the status of Philly fan, you go, yep, that's our guy. And uh, we can't wait to see more True. of him. I mean, the interesting thing, too, is, is uh, you know, we... we would normally think of uh, Jonak mostly in the Zenyatta role, but Zenyatta isn't available in the June Joust. So yeah. while he's good on some of these other supports, he's not going to be able to play his marquee hero, which for me feels a little bit bad because I love watching him play as uh, Zenyatta, but it also is going to be a little bit of pressure on him to perform better on that Ana than we saw in the May Melee. There is our lineup for our first map here coming out from New York Excelsia, Flora, uh, Flora Feather, Yakpung, and the rest, Mono Hotpa, Alarm, and uh, Toto. Toby, of course, and uh, on the uh, on the Philadelphia side, we've got things a little bit mixed up, it looks there. But uh, yeah, well, what do you want to say about that screen, ZP? You know what well, I want to say? At the bottom, it looks like kind of a record. You could scratch it and do a little bit of a DJ mix. Interesting. See, what would your DJ See, name be, ZP? Uh, me that first, uh, it'd probably, it'd have to be DJ like Z and then, I don't know, something poppy with pop. Not pop, but like so, some P that made sense because that's just been the way of the world recently where people just take ZP oh. and apply whatever they want to it uh, as a late. It's true. I have a, a pet in a different game that I've named Z Parrot. Yeah, I know. I, I saw that. So and, you know, I hope you're treating the Z Parrot well. But one thing I do want to say before we get too far moved, the one thing <laughs> for New York that has looked really, really good this season, Flora. Flora has been insane, and Flora has been a big reason why when New York has looked well and they've taken fights, it's been off of Flora's hit scan play, and that's one thing in this current hero pool that shouldn't be ultra, ultra change. I think, you know, we saw McCree still play, maybe not quite as much, but, you know, it's something that New York hopefully is going to be playing around and enabling here. Yeah. Who's that Pokemon? It's Hoppa or Toby. <laughs> they have the same silhouette, believe it or not. We're moments away from getting into our first map. It's going to be Lijiang Tower for control, but I'm just excited about uh, seeing this one because the thing is, is more than anything, we can have different expectations set about these two teams, but before we see them get into the map and actually get to see the uh, the matches, there's, it's hard to predict, right? When hero pools become a factor, it definitely does change the dynamic. You have teams like the Shanghai Dragons that look like they were born to play with this hero pool. And then you have uh, other teams that are going to fall by the wayside where they may have done a little bit better in June. So I just kind of want to get into it and see how uh, they kind of get a look at this meta. Well, one thing I think you also have to draw a comparison 
on both the teams is that, you know, New York, you're still looking at a team that has, you know, newer players by comparison to the Fusion, where, I mean, the Fusion, this is a team of veterans with one of the best rookies, you know, no, no longer rookie, but, like, one of the best players to come in strong as rookie, now just, like, the dominant leader in support. So, I yeah. mean, if there's any team that should have the versatility to come into a new meta, hero pools or not, and go, yeah, this is no problem. I mean, it's a Fusion. You, you don't get more experience than this. Also, you know, fun part here is that Mono gets to face off against his former team. So I don't think there's really right. much of a revenge element there, but, you know, Mono certainly knows the best way to get under, uh, you know, New York overall. Uh, certainly going to be looking out for Jonak. Sure, we, we talked about that before, actually, in the main melee, that uh, Mono might have a little bit of insight. That said, you know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of names that have changed over on the NYXL side than uh, were there yeah. when he was part of the team. So you've got that insight, but then you've also got uh, some, you know, new people to sort of deal with. So you, you always expect there to be a little bit of mind games, but as time goes on, that becomes less and less of a factor here. That said, you know, it is always kind of a little bit fun to face your former team. You know, uh, none more so than when we saw Fearless on the Dallas Fuel able to take out his former team <laughs> to win the May Melee. So it is kind of neat when storylines like that pop up every once in a while. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess you, t you drilled down on it's like Mono versus Jonak and the coaching staff, which, yeah, <laughs> fair enough. I mean, yeah. even coaching staffs uh, over time have tendencies and things they you know, sure. want to favor, ways they want to play. So still a fact. Well, we're moments away again from getting to the map, just waiting for the players to get situated in the lobby. I believe they are. So ZP, it is time in just a moment to get into our first map of the day. I'm going to share my DJ name with you. Do you want to know what it is? All right. What is it? Hit me with it. I wanted to go for a little bit of a science fiction angle on it. So mine is uh, Philip K. Slick, actually. Philip K. Slick. You know, it's unexpected, Nobody's but gonna, you know, I can take it. It, it makes that. sense. No one's going to get it. Somehow. Li Zhang Tower is our first uh, map. It's it's night on Li Zhang Tower. Maybe they're dreaming of electric sheep. That's what Zenyatta's doing. He's just taking a nap because he's not in the hero pool. Yeah, he's gone. He, he got the month off. Finally, uh, you know, some time to see the world. Maybe uh, yeah. bezel Mondata's gold, you know. Wh whatever Zenyatta <laughs> does in his uh, spare oh, time. We, we made it pretty far into this season without Mondata's gold uh, coming into the coming into the cast. I'm, yep. I'm impressed. It I'm had to happen. Look, you have all your catchphrases. Uh, Got to bring I back do. an old classic. We, we talked have. about Street Sharks. Got to bring up Montana's gold, apparently, too. <laughs> at, at some point, it'll be written into the war. The, the, somehow. Hex told me I can't invent lore, but what does he know? He's a producer now. So fair he enough. More. Oh, well, here we're... we go. Getting things started. Uh, Carpe. With every death. Getting his team boost with the Symmetra before swapping onto the Hanzo. We do have Rascal on the uh, Farah as well. So damage from on high. Feather is going to be able to try to match with the Echo. Mercy's on both sides. So we've come to see quite a bit in the APAC region. Flora on that McCree is going to be one to watch as well. Yep, Flora, as mentioned, uh, one of the bright spots for this New York roster this year. Feather working on the outskirts. Hop on, already pretty low. Focus being coming on in. The healing, though. Outpacing it is Feather. Under a little bit of pressure yeah. now onto the outskirts. Oh, Rascal, direct rocket. Ooh. Another moving in. Feather, though, gonna get healed back up. Both teams slow to full six. Yakpong under pressure here off the Bionade. Super low. Carpe caught. Nice. Rascal, though, finish off Yakpong. And it's still five on five, though. Both teams getting their looks in. I mean, uh, Flora does find Rascal finally with that dead eye, but Ooh. Rascal certainly got the damage done. That said, it will only be maybe a little bit of percentage before NYXL takes this point back again. They'll nearly get it. I think they'll finally secure it now. That's right. Only 8% gained for the Philadelphia Fusion. Not the start they were really looking for, but that was a hard-fought battle, ZP. Yeah, it really was. And I think right now, if you're the Fusion, you're looking to adapt. Number one thing here, deal with Flora, who's already making his presence known here on the McCree, and I do think the Fusion will adapt pretty quickly. Do you think the Hanzo is really it for Carpe? I, I feel like maybe you make a change here. Well, Friday is uh, down. That's going to help quite a bit. Feather, though. Yeah, that was really nice available. by Rascal. Nano boost used as well. I don't know if they're going to get a whole lot on that Nano boost. It is a bit of a delay, though, as they go in with the Diva now. Yeah, but this is almost a panic Diva here, where it's going to buy a little bit of time, but the Fusion have such a better move in here. I mean, yeah, it's a duplicate. Go for it, whatever. But Carpe laying in the arrows from above. The Fusion's looking for a little bit more. The bomb from Hoppa deals Ooh. with Feather as the duplicate fades. 
Carpe. Does Listen, indeed Carpe a backshot at the moment. The ult is going to get the Mercy. Not quite. Yeah, yep, he's going to go ahead and throw a zoning Dragon Strike down there. Ooh, he nearly catches Jonak as well, but mostly just trying to find a way to get his team back on there. They do manage to flip it. And with Rascal Rez, we'll see how long the Philadelphia Fusion can hold this. Yeah, I think New York probably wants to back up, give a little bit of space. They've got a few ultimates so to use. What's up? You, you asked me about uh, Carpe Sansa, what I think about it. We just saw a segment where Carpe just kind of missed done. almost every era for a while there. So I'd say historically yeah. he's looked good at points, but did not look great there, even though Fusion won the fight. That was, uh, I mean, that was a little bit tough. We know he's a decent Hanzo, but he doesn't have that Tracer to fall back on this time as well. So what are we going to see? Well, we're going to see Rascal drop right there as Floor picks up another one on the McCree. That Deadeye going to be even more deadly, and New York might not even need it. Now to boost on to Bianca now. Do you think NYXL can pull it off? Well, right now it's looking pretty darn oh, yeah. decisive. Uh, <laughs> not really much question to that one. They did have to, you know, invest some degree of ults there for though, set up for the next. And yeah, Carpe yeah, swapped to McCree. I, I think this is good. The, the arrows were not landing, yeah. Doa, and uh, this yeah. is much more <laughs> Carpe's bread and butter. So I, I think this is a good swap coming in from the fusion. I think it's important to have a good Hanzo player in this meta with this hero pool, but at the end of the day, Carpe is, is you know, going to do better on those hit scans. Glad to see him yeah. swap to the McCree, but is it too late? They need to win a couple fights here to be able to win this round. I see he's still getting good start Yankba for Yankba NYXL. Got away, but, uh, oh, Hoppa! The bomb sealed his fate, cut off his escape. The resurrection is there, but Fusion, they're going to take a lot of presence on the point as a result of this, Carpe. Under a little bit of pressure, duplicate into the back, and already stripped away. As Carpe yep, looking to the now. McCree, but here comes the bomb. New York zoning, Yakpun manages to take out Hotpun before he can get back into the mech again. And Florida, the kill on Mono seems to have sealed the deal for this round anyway. New York, oh, overtime extended just a little bit, but I don't know if Rascal's being able to keep this going for much longer. But oh, Carpet gets a dead eye. All right. Oh, can't stand the point. Oh. Well, they didn't really have anyone durable to put on there. You can <laughs> see the two tanks through the wall there were not even close. And so NYXL comes out swinging, it gets that first round. Yeah, and, you know, on one hand, I, New York did look better there. Certainly, uh, you know, Flora looked very on point. I think Feather on Echo was totally fine. The, right. the one thing I look back at, though, is that Rascal had a bit of a monster round for the Fusion, and the only reason why Fusion didn't, like, basically run away from it as a result of that is that Carpe was a bit off on the Hanzo, where if the Fusion yeah. adjusts to something they're generally better at, I, I do think this next round could be quite a bit tougher for New York, but yeah. we'll see how it pans out. Certainly no, is a percent market agree. comp swap. Hanzo didn't seem to be it for Carpan that one. He's going to actually go over to the Soldier 76 now. Flora as well seems to be a pretty common pick. Getting started uh, in this hero pool on this map point specifically. A lot of good angles, a lot of good flanks you can use. Let's see what Flora's waiting for here. Good way to handle the Echo as well. Let's go swooping on in. Fusion. Trying to take the fights to the point a little bit earlier. Both teams feeling each other out. And now Mana yep, decides now to move on over. A little bit of pressure on Yakman. A lot turns into a lot of bit of pressure. Bionate's inside. Yakman's still alive. He's still somehow alive with the Bionate. Yakman was able to shake the pressure, gets Whoa. healed back up. As Bianca nearly bites it. Also healed. Jonak plucks the healing stat we saw before. Drops the nano oh. on the Yakman as he looks to move back in. But here's the problem. They don't get a pick off. Alarm has a nano of his own. And here we go the other way. Mono goes to the back, takes down Flora, and we'll see if that's all the fusion need. They do give up first cap to New York. Uh, they they take 14%. Now New York gets a percentage of their own going here. Yakpunk getting slept really was amazing. It helped Philly survive. And there's Feather over on the Ana. Okay, trying to build a fast nano boost. It looks like they decide they need a bit more healing to keep the percentage rolling. He's going to get that nano boost onto Yakpunk, and Yakpunk's going to put it to great use here. New York fighting right back. Another nano on the Octopong to set that up. And now Primal right for the Octopong. Probably going to be used here soon. <laughs> it's wow. going to need to All just right. a delay <laughs> as Rascal goes wild on the duplicate onto the other end. Going to be looking for Flora here. Flora, though, still is about alive. Ooh. Takes down Rascal before falling a turn. <laughs> this, this game is, is a blood so bath, back man. and forth. It, it really it is. It certainly is. Yeah, and uh, through all that, Philly did manage to flip the point in their favor, but for how long? 
A little bit more damage on the hot but there. Flora needs to back off, make sure he stays safe. Carpe down, everyone on Philly down. It looks like New York will be able to flip it back. Yeah, you would think more. the way this game has got so far, who knows, Feather, the quick got it. execute onto Carpe. And yeah, New York okay. should be even this up 41 to 41, but how back and forth has this been, Doa? Absolutely wild thus far. Hey. Yeah, I mean, I think what we're seeing is just a, a lot of uh, really nice individual plays on both sides right now. And so you're going to have a really scrappy series because of that. And also teams just kind of getting used to playing against it. You know, you're going to have heroes coming at you from angles that you're not expecting because you're going to have heroes that you're not expecting as much. And it takes some time to adjust to that, even at the pro level. And so the Fusion, they're, they're buying their time, but they shouldn't be buying it for too long here. New York at 65% and climbing. The time for Fusion to go in has to be soon. And it sets me New York with the first move. Nano boost out oh. early. Flora, though, in response to Brock, it finds alarm. Carpe, though, attack visor up. It's on the feather. Five on five. Carpe over to the side. Gonna be pushing off How the they diva. Lose yeah. Also, Fusion have to get, get on to the point here. They're losing time. 82%. They might not get another fight, Doa. Yep, that's right. It's do or die right now for the Philadelphia Fusion. It's one more fight, and then they need to hold it, not let New York take it back here. Flora pretty close to another ultimate as well. New York in firm position here to try to hold it. It's going to come down on the Philly side a lot to what Rascal can do with this Echo ultimate. You can see he's trying to get the flank here. Who's he going to pick? Overtime. Comes in from the back the looking for the Jonak. assassination. Oh, Yakpung down. Flora down as well. Philly, they may have done it here. Yeah, those two early picks really turned the tide. Jonak though looking yeah. to fight. Okay, Rascal <laughs> blows the out of the fight. Jonak on of the auto. Three HP I mean, for Rascal, and he lives. Why not? I mean, for Fusion, you didn't want to be greedy on saving ults here. You just wanted to make sure you got the point. But this is such a golden opportunity for New York to come back in and take map one. I, I'm just amazed. I mean, how insane is this? How back and forth is the series so far? This has been great. We'll see if New York can lock it in. Like you said, they got a good opportunity. They've got the ultimates they need. Can't they put them to good use, though? Just have to see Mono. There's some heavy pressure. Really doesn't want to use the Primal until absolutely necessary. Yakpun, meanwhile, opening with the Primal. Primal out on both sides. Toby down early. Big early pick here from New York. Mono, though, able to find Jonak. Both teams down in early support. Flora heading back over in and onto the point. And New York yep. get real close to a flip here. Friday, though, out. And look at Mono right now. Mono and Hoffa both pretty low and both Aww. down. <laughs> Bianca able to just slide on in. Flora falls, but the damage was done. And now at the bottom of the point, Fusion are in danger. I mean, Carpe trying to carry here. He's got the attack visor going, but he doesn't really have the angle. The shields, the defense matrix in the way, and he can't get the damage done. New York into overtime, ready to try to take this map. Come back in. 2 0. Billy coming in, and they're getting killed. Now Mono and Rascal will open up. Rascal nearly off the map, but able to get back over and in. Finds Friday off the rebound. Flora shooting off the attack visor, but it might be all for naught. What as the this? fusion <laughs> retake the point at 96%. Is anyone going to be able to touch a point here for New York? They are. Ah, uh, they will. And here comes the duplicate. This is actually, this could be big. Feather staying around here. I don't know if the bomb's going to be coming out, but it is buying time for New York. Another wave of New York heading right back in. Here comes the bomb from Feather. Does it get anything? What does it do? Jonak's in the fight. Might not no. be enough. Friday though with two. Friday with two on the outskirts, Noah. Surely not. Bianca takes out Toby. Suddenly New York's right back on in. Could this be map one? Rascal on the duplicate primal, trying to say something about it, but it might be too late. Self-destruct. Ooh, not on the point though, and that's gonna leave New York open for this. That said, it's a big minefield. Yakpunk trying to bash his way through it with that primal rage, but it's all about Friday. Right now, can he get, oh, he nearly got the boost. We didn't quite get it done. And I don't know, that overtime is, is gonna drop fast. New York, they just need to hold it for just a second. Focusing beam is out, Mono is down. Does Fusion have anything left in the tank as New York has been able to flip a tough situation off Feather's delay? Are they actually gonna flip this back? Oh my goodness, ZP. New York does it, they flip it back in overtime, drops almost immediately, NYXL. Able to take map one, but man, that was a brawl. That was a round one for the ages, uh, a map one rather, <laughs> where 
I mean, it just reminds me of a prize fight where, you know, both fighters come out and just start swinging haymakers. I mean, yeah, New York won yeah. both rounds, but that could not have been more back and forth between both teams. Fights that you thought were won, weren't won. Hero plays came in on both sides. Seriously. And one more case hit at the very end there where, you know, two things to note. Feather looking really good on the final delay. And Friday, a player that, you know, almost seemingly had nerves, Noah, going back to May Melee, where you know, yeah. a lot of people looked at Friday and said, well, okay, a lot of underperformance here. Picks off two when it's needed most. So if Friday can keep that up, could be a very different New York Excelsior. That's right. Who knows if it's going to be a 3-0 or a 3-3 going on later in the day. It's going to be insane. It's going to be action-packed, and it's going to be coming right back after a few minutes. You don't go anywhere. Overwatch League will return in just a few. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. Set your sights on the competition with T-Mobile. And by Indeed, we help people get jobs.